here at Illinois and Dearborn streets. Uh, this is a fire station currently, but what used to be here back in the old days was the old Cook County Jail before it moved to where it is now, 26 in California. Uh, just back there, that building back there is the old Cook County Courthouse, uh, which is now a courthouse museum. Right around the corner, about the middle of that fire station, is where, when hangings were legal in this state up to about 1927, 90 men were hung from the neck until they died. That's where the gallows were set up, right over there. Uh, no woman ever hung in Chicago, just 90 men. Uh, lots of stories of the fire station being haunted. Uh, firemen for years have reported hearing the sound of like a, a moaning or a wailing ghost in here. Uh, one of the guys who was connected to the Haymarket Square riot, 1886. It was a peaceful protest for the eight-hour workday. Uh, eventually turned into a riot, a bomb getting thrown. All the guys who spoke that day, even though none of them probably threw the bomb or caused any of the problems, were convicted and eventually hung here, five of them. Uh, but only four of them actually died here by hanging because the fifth one, a guy named Louis Ling, the night before, bit on a dynamite cap and blew his head off. Some say he's the one that's heard wailing in here. One of Chicago's serial killers named Johan Hock, who by the time the police caught up to him, it was estimated that he had married 55 women, all for very short times, marry them for a short time, take their money, either run or kill them. He was executed here. His ghost was reported seen here shortly after the execution. Um, another common report of a ghost here is that of uh, a lot of the firemen here what sounds like somebody singing throughout the building. There were several men who as they were being brought to the gallows were singing including this man named Carl Wanderer who uh, his case became known as the case of the ragged stranger. In 1919, Carl Wanderer uh, owned a successful butcher shop here in Chicago. He had a young wife pregnant with their first child. Everything seemed great, but I guess behind the surface it wasn't so great because one day on Madison Avenue he finds a drifter. This goes up to the guy and says, hey, my wife doesn't think I'm too much of a man. I want to show her that I'm a man. If I give you 10 bucks, which was big money in 1919, will you, we're going to go to the movies, as we're walking back to our apartment, will you jump out from behind the bushes, pretend to rob us, so I can attack you and look like more of a man to my wife? And the guy's like, hey, yeah, for 10 bucks, you got it. He even gives him a gun. So they do this whole thing, but... The plan probably was all along that he wasn't going to just look like a man. He might have wanted to get rid of his wife for whatever reason. There were stories that he had was having an affair with a young girl or maybe he wanted to get back into the army. Lots of different stories out there. But what he eventually does is he ends up shooting both the drifter and his pregnant wife who both died. Initially he seemed like a hero to the public because they didn't realize what happened right away. But some wise detectives did kind of get onto the thing wondering why this drifter who had no money in his pocket had such a nice expensive gun and when they ran the serial numbers on the guns they realized they were only a couple numbers off and the serial number of the, the second gun actually came up to as being owned by Carl Wanderer's cousin <laughs> So then they questioned him further, and he said, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I, was, I had two guns with me that night, and he took one from me. Then they're like, Carl, what you were thinking going, was going to happen walking home from the movie that you needed two guns? So eventually he does confess to this murder, and he was hung here singing at the gallows. But to me, the greatest story that took place here is not of the hangings that actually happened, but of the hanging that never happened. In 1921, a gangster named Tommy O'Connor, terrible Tommy O'Connor, was arrested for killing a police officer here in Chicago. Tried, convicted, December 1921. He was scheduled to be executed here at the gallows. A Couple nights before his execution, him and a couple of men knock over a guard 
take the guard's gun. They scale like a 10-foot prison wall, jump out on Illinois Street here. Tommy O'Connor jumps on a passing car, waving a gun, tells the driver, keep going. Driver takes off down the road, eventually turns down an alley, crashes his car in the alley, sees Tommy O'Connor running down the alley, and that was the last time that anyone ever saw Tommy O'Connor alive again. He was never seen again. Manhunts, of course, took place. He was never found. Fast forward, you get into the 1970s. Because Tommy O'Connor sentence was to be executed, to be hung by the gallows here. Once hangings were no longer legal in the state of Illinois after 1927, a judge did rule, because that was his sentence, that they needed to keep the gallows up just in case he was ever caught because he had to complete that sentence. So once this closed as the jail, they moved the gallows into the basement of the courthouse there. And those gallows sat up to the year 1977, when finally a judge ruled that I don't think Tommy's coming back anymore. So they dismantled them.